I have long feared that my sins would return to visit me. And the cost is more than I can bear. All right, Shalom, giving all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Achakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders, a great millstone, a ruling, teach well. Peace, uh, salutation to the elect, 144, first fruit. Um, <clears throat> so, dude, I'm, I'm going to replay this real quick. Just let you listen one more time of what he said. I've been on this movie, The Patriot. I only watched it one time, believe me, brothers. <laughs> I mean, like, in the past week. <laughs> I watched the movie multiple times because it's actually really good. Um, but just I just want you to listen to what he says here. I have long feared that my sins would return to visit me. And the cost is more than I can bear. All right. So he has long feared that his sins would return to visit him. And the cost will be more than what he can bear. So I'm going to title this lesson, Repenting Can Change Your Circumstances. For we all know that we have sinned against the Heavenly Father. and We have done our wrongdoing against the Heavenly Father. Shit, you could have done your wrongdoing against a brother. You know what I'm saying? And that can come bite you in the ass. What the world likes to call karma. Okay? Um... And the reason people experience a certain type of karma is because one of the main things is they don't repent or apologize for what they've done. They have a spirit of an Edomite on them, um, which I think I did a lesson not too long ago. It says I think I titled it, Neither They Repented of Their Sins. And that's Revelation, the ninth chapter here. Um in 21, it says, neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. That's why Edomite judgment isn't going to change. Their circumstance isn't going to change because the Lord didn't put the spirit on them to repent. Um, and they're not individuals who are meet for repentance or acceptable. Their apologies wouldn't be acceptable, acceptable to the Heavenly Father. Um I'm going to get just one, one example of how repenting can change your circumstances. And this is going to understand how bad the Lord does not like Esau because he even is giving these other heathens a chance to live peacefully when the kingdom comes. But he's not giving that chance unto these Edomites. But I'm not going to direct this video towards the heathens and the Edomites, but more so to your daily personal life, okay? Because we don't know what's to come. We don't know what's in our future. We have a gist and an understanding of what the scriptures say of what's to come and what's going to happen. But on your day-to-day -day basis, all right, believe me, and you can believe yourself, whatever. I'm speaking to the choir. That's a better analogy or not analogy but a better saying so like you had to shut my door that's a better saying than you know what i can think of it, you know so pretty much on a day-to-day -day basis you are judged you judge and are being judged by others and by the Heavenly Father. Certain things can happen to you on a day-to-day -day basis. You stub your toe. Whether it be large judgments or small judgments, you stub your toe. You burn yourself when you're cooking. Um, you know, someone cuts you off in traffic or you have a near um, accident that could have happened. Or you actually get into an accident on the road. Or, or you, you may get written up at work or you may get fired at work. Whatever. Whatever it is. You got to recognize these judgments immediately, immediately recognize these judgments, repent, and then ask the Lord, please give me a sign or understanding of what I was doing wrong. And the Lord will give it to you in due time. But sometimes the Lord just wants you to feel it. He wants you to go through something first before you figure it out. So you can reminisce. And go back onto the times that you went through this, that, and the third. 
so they can formulate into a either a testimony or just a learning lesson in general, which still would be a testimony. So you can share this information with others if deemed necessary. Let me say that if deemed necessary. And one thing I'm, I may do a lesson, actually, man, this I've been meditating on this lesson I wanted to do for weeks now. And I wanted to call it, I know I'm getting off topic, but I wanted to call it um, be vulnerable with yourself first before you are vulnerable with others. So being vulnerable with yourself also is building a relationship with the Lord because he knows your thoughts. He's in your mind. He knows what you're thinking. Um, he knows if you're rebuking your thoughts, uh, cause you do sometimes, man, we have some fucked off thoughts <laughs> that you need to rebuke and be like, man, that's just not what I feel. You know what I'm saying? And that's not what I truly intend. You know what I'm saying? And, um, sometimes, you know, not sometimes all the time, the scriptures say, don't you know your own selves? Um, you know what you're doing wrong or whatever, or blah, 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 um, or what's going on in your personal life, you know, what's going on in your personal life. You know, that's one reason I don't necessarily technically um, care, I guess, if this is the right wording to, I don't know, maybe I don't have the right wording, uh, so I'm just going to be vulnerable to myself with that. <laughs> Uh, but pretty much, you know what's going on in your life. So have that vulnerability with the Heavenly Father and that open line of communication so he can work with you to fix it. Now, if you don't want to share that with anybody, that's a personal thing. But just keep that between you and the Lord and fix that in-house so it doesn't spew out. So others are entitled to their own opinions about whatever's going on with you. You see what I'm saying? Um, I hope I'm making sense there. But back to what I was saying, the topic at hand, repenting can change your circumstance. If you have found yourself not repenting for certain things, um, then it's going to come back and bite you in the ass straight up. All right. Uh, if you can't remember very specific things that you may have screwed up on, that's when a vague and a broad repentance can still change your circumstance. A simple saying as in, matter of fact, let me get this, let me get this, I'm going to Jonah, but let me get this precept, Psalms 51. And I send this prayer up every day like clockwork. There we go. Psalm 51 and 9. Hide thy face from my, my sins and blot. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. I send this prayer up like clockwork. Okay. I send it up like clockwork, man. <clears throat> And I advise the same, y'all do y'all y'all do the same. Okay? So hide hide thy face from my sins, like in general, in general, just please. There's certain things that I may not know that I've done incorrectly and need to be corrected on it. Please forgive me for that and blot out all my iniquities. That's asking the Lord to wink. At your ignorance as well, you know, your filthy wrongdoings. Because you do it every day. I don't care how righteous you think you are. You, you, you're you doing something wrong every single day. None of us here are perfect. That's why we're still on this planet. Or we're still under Esau's rule. Or we're still a slave. We're still here. We haven't been translated. Um, we still got a lot of work to do. You know, so if you are an individual who think you may be you know, righteous and just know that I'm not trying to like ruin confidence or anything, but just understand that you're not there yet. We're still here. Okay. 
So let's go ahead and get into the account or an example of how repenting can change your circumstance. So this is Jonah, of course, just the synopsis or gist, gist of one and two is pretty much, uh, I'm speaking about the first and second chapter of Jonah. The Lord told Jonah to get up and go to Nineveh because he had a word or he had an ought against this place, Nineveh. Um, you know, and he, want, he wanted uh, Jonah to go over there and prophesy to him. Jonah instead wanted to go over to Tarshish, which is modern day Spain, and he didn't really want to do it. So the Lord made him do it, swallowed him up when he was on the boat, um, you know, and then ultimately spit him out on dry land. That was at the end of uh, the second chapter, I want to say. And then now we're here where he's forced to do the work. Uh, if the Lord wants you to do something, he, he's going to make you do it. One second here. Okay. So like it. All right. So this is Jonah chapter three, verse six. It says, and the word came unto the king of Nineveh. And he wrote, uh, and five John 3 and 5 so the people are never mm, tripping let's just start at one <laughs> Jonah uh, 3 and 1 and the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time saying arise go into Nineveh that great city and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee so Jonah arose and went to Nineveh unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey. Verse four, verse four and says, And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Now, when you read this script, the Lord didn't specifically tell him to, to say yet forty days, because we don't know, you know, we don't know. <laughs> but Still, he said a word on, on, on to Nineveh. Jonah was kind of rebellious, man, when you read it. It says, um, and Jonah began to enter into the city at day's journey, and he cried and said, yet 40 days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh, verse 5, believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on saft cloth from the greatest of them, even to the least of them. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne and he laid his robe from him and covered himself, uh, him with sackcloth and satin ashes. And he caused it to be, to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh, the king did, um, by the decree of the king and his noble, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink of water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth. And cry mightily unto the heavenly Father. Yeah, let them turn every one from his evil way, and from the the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will will turn and repent, and turn away from his fierce anger, and we perish not? In the Most High saw their works, and they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that He had said that He would do, do unto them. And he did it not. This is the prime example of repenting can change your circumstances. What if they did not repent? The Lord would have furthered on the punishment and destroyed them. Even though Nineveh was destroyed all in all because at the end of the day they're heathens. But they repented in that very moment. And the king made a decree for everyone to repent. So how does this apply to you on a daily, uh, day to day basis? Repenting can change your circumstances, okay? So if you're not repenting daily, your circumstances will stay the same. And in that sense, since we all have done wickedness, since we all are not perfect, since we all fuck up on a day-to-day -day basis, you will be judged for that. And how your judgment comes will stay stagnant unless you repent, okay? And your circumstance can definitely change. All right. Your end destination could definitely change. Your destiny.
can change. All right. Everyone's destiny isn't peaches and cream. And when I mean peaches and cream, I mean salvation because that sweet peaches and cream. Salvation getting beaten up on a chariot and getting out of this muck of what we call life called America, living in America, living in America, <laughs> what we call that and getting saved out of it is peaches and cream. That's very sweet. If you don't repent, you will stay here and burn. I have to say it frankly, because that's just what it is. So if you're not repenting on a daily basis, you're just telling the Lord you want to stay here and perish and die. All right. Repent. Apologize. Apologize who you need to apologize to. Say what you need to say. Or if you need to keep it vulnerable, uh, you know, not vulnerable, but if you need to keep it within closed doors, do that. The scriptures advise you to do that when you read in the, in the book of Matthew, the fifth and the sixth chapters. Going into your closet, all right, which is your mind. Now I can use that word in being vulnerable unto the heavenly father. He may make it a circumstance to, to where ah, maybe I do got, have to open up and say something. OK, but all in all, the gist of the uh, the entire lesson is repent. So your circumstance can change because we're all worthy. All of us are worthy of death because of the wrongdoings that we have done in our life. Repent. Repent is a form of humility. So if you ever want to practice humility, then repent. All right. Look yourself in the mirror and repent for the wickedness that you've done, that you've done in your past life, that you've done in this life. Shoot. And if the Lord gives you days to come, take it to the point where, hey, I just repent for anything that I may have not done. All right. You can repent for that. All right. A matter of fact, I'm going to get this last script and then uh, close it out. You can repent for things that you have not done. <sighs> what is that script? Do I want to say it, but chapter 18? Please bear with me. <laughs> Chapter 19. Yeah. Chapter 19 and 13. Admonish. I'm just going to read one. Admonish a friend. It may be he have not done it. And if he have done it, that he do it no more. So when you would, sometimes when you hear bros admonishing us and maybe saying something, don't always. If you know you haven't done it. Don't fucking overly take it seriously. That's something that I've struggled with in my walk. Taking everything to heart. And then feeling some type of way. Going, oh, you fucking do that. Now, sometimes you got to take things with a grain of salt. All right? Because you just may have not done it. You just haven't done it. But it's being admonished, so you know not to do it. Don't take it all personal. You know what I'm saying? Simple. Take it with a grain of salt. It's not always about you. Someone's not always talking about you or intending um, to for it to be about you. And even if it is, still kind of just be like, all right, you know, and, and just consider it, you know. So repent for even if you've done it or not. Just still repent. Repent. Just repent because <laughs> it can change the circumstance. Simple. All right. So, Lord willing, that was uh, edifying. I'm going to give all glory, honor, praises to you. How will Bashimi, how will Shai, Bashimi, Chakwadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of the great millstone in the room and teach well. Peace of salutation to the elect 144 first fruit. Until the next time, we say Shalom. I like always repent <laughs> for you. How is coming back sooner than what me and you believed? All right. Shalom.